Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Kang, and uh, I'm currently working at Coinbase Exchange team. So today, I'm going to uh, tell you a story about how we improved our uh, Golang-based trading engine. So a trading engine is a core component of, uh, uh, of an exchange. Uh, basically, what it does is uh, it serves a, a list of orders coming from the left side, and then internally maintain an in-memory data structure that's called an order book. And if uh, two orders, a buy order and a sell order match, they will generate a trade event, and the downstream system would uh, uh, change the uh, item and or the money. So trading engine is a very interesting application. By design, it's a single threaded. So all the orders coming in need to be processed in order. Uh, in order to improve the reliability of the system, we also uh, introduce a raft clustering. So basically, every time an order comes in, it will get replicated to five nodes. And uh, uh, so that uh, if the leader has some, any problems, the followers can step up immediately. So Coinbase.com has been pretty successful, and uh, so does our trading engine has been getting a lot of traffic. Uh, the, the thing interesting about the, uh, <laughs> the financial uh, exchange is the, lo the lower latency you have, the more traffic you have, because traders always want to trade more. And the moment you, your system start to have a jitter, your latency increase, the traffic dies down, and then uh, this cycle repeats. So by the middle of 2022, uh, we are already running on the maximum size of machine that money can buy on AWS, which is not great. And we also have to implement the um, application level sharding so that we can handle more traffic. All of that comes towards to one Aston Martin, which is what I guess crypto guys do. <laughs> but this is a lot, and it's not, um, it's not sustainable, of course. So I joined the Coinbase about uh, one and a half year ago. Uh, you know, I spent a, a, quite a bit of time uh, digging into why we have such a latency problem where our P50 and P99 has. So infrastructure is a little bit, but I won't cover too much here because we're at a Golang service, a conference. So what I also did is dig into the code and find all the little uh, annoyance or like a problem that introduced to the, la uh, to the latency. Uh, what, you know, being a financial software, one thing you do a lot is the decimals. And the shop screen decimals is the, the one that shows up on Google <laughs> whenever you, you search for Golang decimals. Uh, but, that's a, but this implementation has like a, a very particular issue that caused a lot of uh, memory allocation and, uh, uh, and the scaling latency issue if you don't care for enough. One of that is uh, uh, all the those decimals, they have like an inherently different scale internally. So if you compare two decimals with different scale, uh, you're gonna have to like uh, reallocate, uh, rescale, and if you do this thousand, a hundred, a thousand times uh, a second, then it's quickly become a problem. The other one is, uh, you know, a lot of our code just use string all, you know, as, as a key and uh, also as like an input and output to the system. So this is a lot. Another interesting uh, problem that we faced is uh, things like random, right? So in our system, a lot of places we have to use UID to be able to generate UIDs in different part of the system. And UID by default reads from like local uh, dev U random, which is like a limited resource and when you have like a high throughput load latency scenario, again, you would want to do some um, uh, optimization like pre-allocation. You want to enable some uh, uh, pooling of the random. And uh, even more funnier is uh, I found that we actually spend more time logging stuff <laughs> than actually serving the customer in some case. Uh, one particular issue we had is uh, we didn't realize beginning uh, logger.error, by default, is not buffered. Makes sense, because most of the time you want to flush the disk so that you can see the error. But in our case, if you have too many errors, suddenly our system will just break down right, for no reason. So we found that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, logging routines that basically serialize and deserialize stuff repeatedly. Uh, in some cases, we are serving the customer using an efficient data format, but then we're logging to the disk using like JSON. <laughs> so it's not that great. Uh, causing a lot of allocation problem as well. Uh, another thing we have is uh, uh, StatsD, which is a, we are a heavy uh, Datadog company, uh, you probably know, but so we use StatsD library to talk to the Datadog. And uh, StatsD actually, uh, if you dig down into it, it has an internal buffer. So if you exceeded that buffer, 
your, uh, you, you, any metrics you log turns into a UDP call <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the local uh, stats the agent, so which is, again, not great. You don't want to make UDP calls in your hot loop. And then you have channel mode. You have extended aggregation. So all, this will, uh, all of that will help you to basically um, uh, collect the metrics you want. But even then, it's still not enough for some of our hot loops. Because uh, a lot of our, uh, we implement a lot of batching features in the system to improve the throughput. But the batching actually didn't really batch. They just do a full loop of uh, calling one function. And you just call like stats D five times if you have a, a five items in the, in the batch. So again, not that great. Um, so this is even uh, lower level. It's, uh, we use a lot of portal buffs. And we found in some case, we actually spend 50% of, uh, of our uh, latency just by deserializing and serializing in portal buff. So again, not great. Uh, and one last trick I did I want to show here is uh, I just add a, a default continue in one of the, the hot loops and I immediately dropped our latency to like 20%. So this one is a, a very interesting case because I, ha I think it has something to do with uh, Gola how Golang scheduler play with our particular, like, the way that our, our program is written. So two, two, item, two tips here. One is spin your important loops. Second is uh, you do batching, right? And uh, um, also maybe thinking, uh, moving away from gRPC unary mode, but use streaming instead. So uh, since I don't have a lot of time left, uh, I just want to showcase our success here. Instead of buying a one Aston Martin every year, we're only buying a wheel now. <laughs> so it's pretty great. Thanks, guys.